All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Brandon Smith. I'm the chair of the Health, Environment, and Social Services Committee for Community Board 2. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Welcome to the January 2021 meeting of the Health, Environment, and Social Services Committee. Uh, this meeting is uh, uh, now being recorded for the purpose of transparency and for permanent public access from the CB2 YouTube archive. All attendees should keep your microphone muted when you're not speaking. District staff will actively assist in maintaining this protocol. It is the practice of Com Brooklyn Community Board 2 to conduct remote meetings with all committee members cameras on for full transparency. We encourage all attendees to also leave their cameras on, particularly if you are given the floor to speak. To maintain appropriate discussion and voting process, I will make it known when and which topics are open for comment by committee members, board members at large, and the general public. If you wish to speak, please use the WebEx feature in the participant panel to digitally raise and lower a hand, and I will call on you in order. If you have questions that fall outside of public comment time, please type your questions in the chat panel, and we will address them if relevant to the matter and as time permits. If any attendee experiences technical difficulties with the WebEx software or features during the meeting, please consult help.webex.com. After the meeting, please reach out to the district office at dk02.cb.nyc.gov. It is our desire to provide access for all of our neighbors, regardless of physical ability or limitation. If you require any accommodation or assistance for full participation, please contact the district staff office 72 hours before any public meeting. Uh, we will now begin the roll call and introduction of the, uh, the members who are here. Um, and we're particularly delighted tonight to be joined by the Transportation Committee. Um, I, I'm not sure uh, everyone is here from that committee, but I do see a, f uh, a few folks. But so we'll, we'll we'll go in the and first introduce the folks from the Health Committee. Again, I'm Brandon Smith. I'm the chair of the Health Committee. Ms. Thurston, do you want to go next? Sure. Hi, I'm Jessica Thurston. I'm the secretary of the committee. Hey, um, Ms. Church, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Carol Ann Church, assistant district manager. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Varela? Hi, Alejandro Varela, public member. Hey, Ms. McKnight? Good evening, everyone. I'm Nicole McKnight, and I am a member. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Newmark, do we, do we have you? Yes, Barry Newmark, public member. Great. Um, Mr. Andrews, you want to introduce yourself? Mr. Andrews, are you there? Well, we can come back to Mr. Andrews if necessary. Um, I see we had, we, we at least had Mr. Dew. Mr. Dew, are you still there from the Transportation Committee? Yes, I am. Okay, do you want to introduce yourself briefly? I'm John Dew from the Transportation Committee. Excellent. Um, do you see anyone else here from your committee? I actually don't see anyone at this particular point. Okay. Well, we'll certainly make an introduction when we get to that point. Um, we're we're also honored to be joined by Ms. Masso, who's a board member. Um, Ms. Masso, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, good evening, Latron Masso, committee member. Board member, sorry. Board, that's fine. Um, Ms. Masso, you're not, you're not a member of the Transportation Committee? And I feel like I, I don't want to assume or not assume, but I just want to clarify. No. Okay. We're, we're very honored to have you here regardless and appreciate you coming to uh, our meetings. Um, I think that is everybody. We'll try to get Mr. Andrews to introduce himself when his technological features are working. Um, we have quorum one, two, three, four, five. I believe we do. Um, I will take a motion to approve this evening's agenda. Mr. Newmark moves um, in a second. 
second from Miss McKnight. Um, and I will, for ease of, uh, of reference, I'm going to just call everybody out to uh, make sure that we approve things in orderly and understandable format tonight. Um, so, any discussion? Not seeing any. Um, Mr. Newmark, are you in favor? I'm in favor. Ms. Thurston? In favor. Ms. Varela? And Ms. Okay. Uh, Ms. McKnight? In favor. And Mr. Andrews, are you still there and are you in favor? I think he's still having technical difficulties. I, I'm in favor. Okay. So proceeding, proceeding along with uh, tonight's agenda, we are really delighted to have uh, a presentation tonight from the from uh, actually a few different uh, places. Let's see if who we have on the line. I, I think I saw somebody here. Do we have Julia de Giacomo from Magnolia House Women's Shelter Program? Yes, I'm here. Unfortunately, I'm having a little technical difficulties with my computer, so I'm by phone, but I can see you all and thank you for the invite. Okay, great. Well, we're very happy to have you. Do we have Carol Rubenstein from uh, Canva? Um, she should be joining any moment. I can text her to let her know. I had just spoken with her before the call. So let me just text her, okay? Okay. And in the meantime, do we have Yuri Sanchez or anyone from New York City Support Services for Homeless Persons? Hi, this is Yuri Sanchez. I'm the Brooklyn Bar Director for the Department of Social Services. Okay, great. Um, do we want to maybe have you go first, Ms. Sanchez, so that we can uh, see where the, uh, we can see what, if, if Ms. Rubenstein can join in, in, in just a second, and, and, and then we can, we can flip to, to her and, and Julia. I also want to let you know that uh, my new colleague, Allison Moreland, who's now the Vice President Program Director for Opportunity House is, I believe, also on the call. Oh, great. Um, Ms. Moreland, do you want to introduce yourself briefly? Perhaps we can connect with Ms. Moreland in, in just a second. Uh, Ms. Sanchez, did you want to get started with your with your presentation? So I do not did not plan uh, to do a presentation. Uh, Carol Ann did submit uh, questions from you all, variety of questions. Um, unfortunately, I do not that re those responses are still pending uh, from the agency. But I can answer whatever questions that I'm able to tonight. But the list of questions, the responses are still pending. Okay. Okay. Well, I think maybe we can move to that in just a second. Um, in that case, Ms. Giacomo, uh, did you, were you able to get in touch with Ms. Rubenstein? And do you feel like she'll be able to join us shortly? Yeah, she's trying to get in right now. And I think I saw Ms. Moreland. Ms. Moreland is right there. Raise yeah, I, I, okay. I can see Miss Moreland, I think, too. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, so Carol is joining right now. She just texted me back. She's getting on now. Okay. Would you all like to take the lead and start and, and start your portion of the presentation? Sure. I can say that um, my name is Julia DiGiacomo. I'm the program director for Magnolia House Woman Shelter. We are a 200-bed facility located in East Brownsville, New York. Um, East New York, Brownsville area of Brooklyn. However, we have been temporarily relocated to the Aloft Hotel because of the COVID pandemic. So we are uh, housed there now, right now. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Now oh, there's Carol. There's Carol. Yeah. Good evening, Ms. Rubenstein. It looks like you might be on mute. Um, yeah. There we go. No, no, 
I was un. You're on mute. You're not. You're unmuted now. We can hear you. Now you can hear me, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. I thought the meeting was at six thirty, and I was taking a little bit of time to come on, and then Julia texted me. So please accept my apologies. No, it's just fine. It's just fine. Um, did you want to introduce yourself and maybe commence your part of the presentation? Sure. Um, so I think I met some of you last month that I waited very patiently through your meeting. Um, I'm Carol Rubenstein, Senior Vice President Canva. I oversee a number of our single adult shelters of which we have one. We've permanently had um, shelter um, on Prince Street that Carol Ann has been involved in in our community advisory board meetings for a number of years. Um, and then we just recently had, and I think I came in when um, Julia was talking, and then we recently did some density reduction and moved into the A loft hotel. So I know that some of you we had talked about, I know Carolyn and um, shared with me, talk a little bit about what Canva does, and then maybe answer any questions and talk about what we're doing um, at the moment. I do see three of the staff from Canva here. I see Allison who was our director of Opportunity House. And we have Kenyatta Suddeth, I see, who is the assistant program director um, of Opportunity House. We've been there about 10 years now, I think, right, Kenyatta? Nine years, 10 years? Over, we, we opened February 2nd, 2010. 2010, so yeah, so we're gonna hit, oh, so it'll be 11 years mm -hmm. next month. Yep. And then um, Julia DiGiacomo, who is the program director for um, Magnolia House um, that we have temporarily moved there um, in July. So I know that in my last last time I was here, I think somebody sent out the web address for Canva and I don't know if every people looked, um, but Canva um, has been around since the late 70s. Um, initially was a small merchant association on Flatbush Avenue um, in Brooklyn and focusing on crime reduction and neighborhood beautification and city service improvements. However, through these years and up until now, we've now developed into 160 different types of programs. We service over 65,000 people a year. Um, and we have six interconnected programs of where we have programs underneath the umbrella. So we have, we provide legal services um, for immigrants. We do eviction prevention. Um, um, so that's our legal arm. And then certainly some of our clients utilize our legal services. We have economic development. We have health um, where we have um, HIV programs. We have family and community support where we have programs such as after school programs. We have foster care prevention. We have beacon um, community school programs. We have education and youth development. Um, in there, we have some GED classes. We have a, um, we do have youth development, which I think that's where our beacon programs fall under. We also have um, anti-violence programs um, in Brooklyn. And then we have the housing stability where we have five single adult homeless shelters. We have a drop-in center for the street homeless who do not want to go to shelter. And we have six family shelters. While originally Canva was um, established in Brooklyn, we are now in five um, in all five boroughs, we have close to 2000 employees. Um, and like I said, 160 programs and 65,000 people serviced. Um, we also have um, camps, summer camps. Um, the challenge now with COVID, many of our programs we can't provide services in. Um, we try to do some things virtual. 
um, especially with the schools, with the schools not all being open. So some of the after school programs, I know there's a drug prevention program that they're doing work virtual. Um, we do provide social workers within the schools. Um, that some of that is being done virtual. Um, even in our shelter programs, which is considered congregate care, which is a concern in the middle of a pandemic, which is why we have done density reduction. Um, in all of our single adult shelters, we've done density reduction meeting. Some of our shelters, we have half in shelter and half in the hotel. Um, Magnolia did a full relocation into a hotel. Um, which, and, and, it, and it's better because you have either a single or a double room versus a dorm that could have 10, 15, even 20 clients in. That, that's the concern about congregate care that they're on top of each other and can spread. So that's the concern. Um, we also, um, I think I talked about anti-violence. We do college readiness. We also have a program to um, address LBG, um, LGBTQ um, parents and their children. Um, so we have an, a lot of programs across all five boroughs. Now, Carol Ann, were there, there were specific questions you wanted answered. Where are you? There you are. Um, I think we did have a few specific questions that we might want to follow up on, but I think it's good from a general perspective to get that layout, particularly the background of how your program works across the, the five boroughs and uh, sort of the beginning parts of the challenges that exper the experience with, with COVID. It might be helpful from the outset to sort of understand how does a person get services amidst the COVID environment? You know, if you're if you're in a hotel room, how do they get hooked up with the ability to go to different programs? And and uh, to what degree does COVID put, present limitations for accessing services in that regard? So, in order to access any homeless shelter within the city, whether you are a family, a couple, or a single adult, um, you go through what they call an assessment shelter. They just can't walk into Magnolia or Opportunity House. And there are assessment shelters. Um, um, there's one for the family called PATH, P-A-T-H, that's listed on the DHS website. And then there's one for the male. Unfortunately, that one's been in the news lately. That's a large setting um, on, at, on Bellevue property. You may have seen it on the news on 29th Street in Manhattan or where there have a lot of people there. Um, and then there are two female assessment shelters um, in Brooklyn. So if somebody says that they're homeless, if they come to us, we would say to them, we cannot provide those services. We can give you a Metro card and you can go to the assessment shelters where they will get assessed to be determined what their needs are. And basically the way to think about it is if somebody has a mental health problem or doesn't have a mental health problem. So there are some shelters that are designated as mental health shelters and some that are designated as general pop shelters. So for example, Magnolia has clients who have mental health, um, severe mental health issues, which may mean like more serious diagnosis or a, um, or it could even be um, substance abuse could be treated mental health or could be untreated mental health and where like opportunity is considered general pop where they don't have a more serious mental health diagnosis because the staffing is slightly different at a mental health shelter versus a general pop shelter. At a mental health shelter, you have more clinically trained people like social workers to help with behaviors um, and help with medication and things like that. Um, I do see, um, so that's the, so that if, and if they're a family member, they would go to a, a path, which is the assessment shelter and they stay there and they figure out where the best place is for that person to go. 
we are we're not licensed, but we are certified or monitored and funded by New York City Department of Health. I'm sorry, of God, New York City Department of Homeless Services, DHS. So they're the ones who control all these beds in all these shelters across the city. So assessment, when a client goes into assessment, they not only determine where the best shelter is for somebody in terms of their needs, but also where there's available bed. And as you can only imagine, the system is horribly tight now, not only because it's winter, but because certainly COVID has also made it worse. People have lost their jobs. Um, um, people have lost their jobs and um, they're, they're, they're homeless and there's no place, you know, there's no place else to go. So the services that generally are provided by shelters is the shelter goal primarily is permanent housing. Our job is to help people get permanent housing. How do we do that? A couple of different ways. One way is certainly trying to get them stable in some way um, so that they can be in permanent housing. And the other piece is completing applications, maybe working with the landlord. Um, Tanya, I kind of saw some of your chat. You were talking about a 2010 E package. That is what we call like a housing package that gets completed by our social service staff to determine what is the best type of housing for somebody. And it typically is supportive housing of which Canva also has supportive housing. I neglected to say that. Um, so the 2010E, it gets comprised of a number of, of different types of paperwork, including a psychiatric evaluation, income, um, um, a history of the client to determine what type of supporting housing does somebody need? Do they need more um, oversight and, and a site that has 24 hour staff there? Or could they manage in supportive housing that has less staff? Or could they also manage independent living with a lot of wraparound community services? Where COVID has hurt us to some extent is we can't get all the services that are needed. Um, a lot of mental health programs in the city are not seeing face to face, so they're seeing folks virtual. Um, and while we have technology, we have um, webcams on site, it's, it's, it's more challenging. You know, um, some of our clients are a little bit more um, 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 some of our clients are a little bit more um, agreeable to seeing somebody virtual or seeing somebody, and some of our clients are not. And so we just have to continue to reach out. And we're trying to do this work socially distant with masks on, um, and it's challenging. You know, we see, we see people in the community who don't believe in masks, um, and we, we have some of our clients who don't want to wear masks. That doesn't mean that we continue to reinforce and we continue to um, encourage um, the use. So it's been challenging to getting, to getting services. And I do see that um, Yuri, who's here from the New York City Department of Homeless Services, communicating with you, Tanya, about um, an issue that you said that somebody was turned away from PATH. Yuri would be the best person to help resolve that um, with you, for you. Um, so that's, so it's a challenge. All of this is a challenge. We try to do the best we can. We have, we do provide, we do do groups where in the past we were able to do groups with eight or nine people, 10 people. Now the groups, if we're doing it is maybe one or two at a time. And the groups can be varied. It could be, um, we have licensed creative arts therapists in both Magnolia and in Opportunity, so they have a different skill set. So if somebody doesn't like necessarily to talk, um, the creative arts therapist tries to work with them in a very creative way with drawings and artwork and even music, other kinds of ways, so that we can help get them stable. And stable may mean taking care of their medical needs, taking care of their psychiatric needs, 
They don't necessarily have to be drug or alcohol free um, because the concept is housing first, but we want them at least to get a little bit stable. And that's what we, tr and that's what we try to help with. But it, it is challenging with, with COVID happening right now. We do, just so that you all know, across the city in all of the shelters, we test for COVID every month, clients as well as staff. It is not mandated to test. We certainly encourage people to be tested. You can be tested every month as long as it's going on. Um, and I can, I can only talk to Canva. We're doing fairly um, well in terms of that. You know, the city has been having some really good numbers where we're spiking up a little bit. But um, in our shelters so far, we've been doing fairly well in in um, in our numbers. So that's really good. Um, that is really good. I, I want to give the chance for some of the committee members to ask questions really quick. But I also want to acknowledge a few folks who've joined us while you, you initially spoke from both committees who are here tonight. We have both the health committee and the transportation committee. Ms. Richardson, do you want to briefly introduce yourself? Excuse me, um, Mr. Chair. I believe she's having problem difficulty with technology. She's chatting, but she's unable to speak. Okay. Right. I see the chatting. Right, and I see Yuri said that she would contact her, um, you. Um, I'm sorry, I said Tanya. Maybe it's Miss Richardson um, about what happened at Path. Um, Okay, well, we can and, follow and, up with Ms. Richardson. Thanks for explaining that, Ms. Church. Uh, Mr. Right. Howell, do you I, want to briefly introduce yourself? Mr. Howell, are, are, are you able to turn on for a second? Yes. Um, just introducing ourselves as members. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I am not a member of this committee, but uh, joining as I am a member of the board. And you're a transportation committee, no? Uh, transportation, public safety, and land use. Great, great. Well, we're we're honored to have you. Thank you very much. And I, I'm I want to allow the members of the committee to ask questions here to so that we can um, get get everybody's thoughts considered. I certainly have a few other questions too. Um, just to remind everybody that before, as we get into question and answer throughout this meeting and throughout our discussion, as as I said last meeting. You know, try to keep your questions and comments somewhat brief. Um, I, I've heard it in the wise source. Be conscious of the space that you take up with your voice, and uh, you know, and and uh, try to avoid making a speech as opposed to making a comment. But we'll we'll be happy to take questions from members of either committee, uh, the health committee or the transportation committee, uh, at this point, and we'll certainly give an opportunity for others to make questions to have questions too. So questions from members of the committees? I know that Ms. Richardson talked about these vouchers and I can, I can just talk a, very just briefly. You know, the city, is, the city is very tough right now in terms of housing, right? We have, a high, we have a housing crisis in the city, maybe not so much with COVID at the moment, but we do have a housing crisis in the city. And yes, there are vouchers, um, but we, it's, it's a constant struggle. We have a number of people that are competing for the same type of housing and there isn't enough housing to go around. The vouchers, while the vouchers, they, they expire and maybe Julia or even Allison can even talk to this, they do get renewed, but they don't have to start the whole process necessarily again. It depends on the voucher. Um, but it's, a, you know, it's thousands of people competing for very few housing. So it's very, very challenging, very challenging. I can appreciate that. Maybe while we wait to see if anyone else has a question, um, I, I, I just wanted to ask you guys about uh, um, how it works with, uh, with children who are uh, homeless. Do, what kind of services exist for them to engage in remote learning and education? So I, I, I could talk briefly about that, and Yuri, maybe you also want to talk. So Canva has six family shelters, um, Bronx, Brooklyn, and Queens, none of them in Community Board 2. 
um, and we do have children in, in those shelters where Wi-Fi is provided so that they can connect to school. But it's challenging because we all know Wi-Fi connections work sometimes and sometimes they don't work. So it is, it is very challenging. But Yuri, you may want to talk to that from a DHS perspective. Um, so, yes, as we all know, everything uh, is mostly remote now. So we have uh, provided iPads um, for children um, who are um, doing remote learning. I don't believe we have any um, families uh, with the children's sites. And let me double check that in, in this community board. I don't believe that's the case. I'm actually correct. Uh, there might be just one. But yes, everything is remote. Um, social distancing is um, being practiced. So there's no groups um, that we had, you know, pre COVID. Um, we're just trying to get by and stay safe and healthy. I see a question from Ms. Thurston. Thanks, Brandon. Hi, this question is either for Carol or Yuri, but I'm I'm curious, you know, uh, particularly in the cold months uh, and given the pandemic, if folks in community district two notice someone that seems like they need help, need housing or need other services, what sort of concise recommendation would you give to us? Like, what should people do? Um, in that situation, and um, ideally that would be specific to our district, but perhaps not necessarily. So it's pretty simple, guys. Call 311. Within one hour, we have street outreach um, will report and attempt to locate the person or persons and offer assistance. Again, you know, we can only offer. We cannot force, um, you know, folks to accept services. Um, 311 is your best um, bet. You can also reach out to me, um, but 311, that way it's uh, documented. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Mr. Varela. Thank you. Hi, um, I, I, my, I have two questions. I'll try to make them brief, not to speechify. Um, but uh, the uh, piggybacking on what Jessica just asked around um, unemployment increases, more homelessness, also more acute mental health issues, the stress of, of you know, poverty, of near poverty, of unemployment, all that stuff. And I wonder if you're aware, I know the city has made an effort to provide more training for the sort of the average person to deal with people in the midst of an acute mental health issue. Um, can you speak more about that sort of training? Does it exist? How easy is it to access? I feel that people tend to call the police in those situations and the police don't typically do a good job Sorry, I mean, they do a terrible job. And so how do we avoid that situation, um, number one? And then my follow-up question is, I, do we have a housing problem or do we have a racism and classism problem? Because, I, and I, I, I'm being sincere, and all my life living in New York City, I've been hearing about the homeless, seeing the homeless, seeing the homeless, but we always have more empty housing units in the city than we do homeless people. So why is it so difficult to transition people who need homes into the empty units. Why are we talking about building more affordable housing when we know that there are empty units in the city? I'm not sure I can answer the second question uh, without giving an opinion. I think that there, what you're saying could possibly be correct. Um, but it's been, we're all fighting, you know, when we have, I think in the single adults where, where I think we're at like at 18,000 people are in the shelter every night. That's just singles. Um, if you go onto DHS website, you'll see how many homeless people are in shelters every night. You can see the numbers go up, go down. Um, doesn't always reflect the street homeless that are, are out there who refuse to come in for lots of different reasons. But I think there's lots of different reasons why there's a housing issue and why there's homeless issues. Absolutely, I, I, I agree. Um, and, and we do have some challenges with landlords who don't wanna um, um, rent to however we define, whether it's homeless, whether it's a male, whether it's a female, whether it's somebody with a psychiatric issue. Um, it's, we need some more supportive housing is, is what, what really what we need because we're struggling and, and homeless shelters is not the place to be. It really isn't. It's, 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 it's rough. It's not to say that the providers are not 
the providers are doing the best that they can and that we've got some really, you know, across the board, just not Canva. There's a lot of well-intentioned, great providers that are providing shelter, temp it's supposed to be temporary emergency shelter for clients. Um, and it's unfortunate when there are some <laughs> folks who are in the system for a long time. It is unfortunate that we have had clients who were a child in a family shelter 20 years ago and find themselves as an adult in an adult shelter. It's, it's terrible. It's, it's a shame that we have um, um, youth who are aging out of foster care that do not have a solid foundation and they wind up perhaps temporary with friends, but ultimately in a homeless shelter at 21, 22, and 23. It's a shame when a family member has, has done everything that they can, but their family member is still using drugs, has psychiatric issues, and just don't know what to do, and has said, I'm done with you, and they wind up in a shelter. Or that people have been incarcerated for 10 and 15 years, and they get discharged to a shelter. It's a, it's, it's a horrible, it, it is, it's a very challenging, difficult system. And so, you know, I, I, I agree with you on some level. I think there's lots of different reasons why we're here the way that we are. Um, in terms of training, if I can pivot in that way, in terms of training, prior to COVID, um, New York State Department of um, Health and Mental Health provided this great training called Mental Health First Aid. And they provided it for free to the community. We even gave it, we even had our staff take it. It's a full day training. It's like a psychological first aid training. Um, and it's great. The city does not do it anymore because of COVID. In fact, we've even raised the question, could they do it again? Even if it's virtual, it's been really helpful. I do think that there are some agencies that may do something like that. It's called psychological first aid or mental health first aid. That's a great training program. I know Julia has gone to it. Allison, I don't know if you've particularly gone to it yet, um, but it's a great training that teaches people how to recognize substance use, maybe provide some resources, um, but it's really a good training. Yeah. Um, and then, and then part of having a homeless shelter within a community, we are obligated to have community advisory board meetings. So while this is community board two, Carol Ann has been part of opportunity. It's been opportunity in ICL because ICL had a, um, right now they're out of the site because of COVID, but it was with, um, um, Auburn, um, which is a DHS run shelter, um, ICL Institute for Community Living and Canva. And we would have um, quarterly community advisory board meetings where we would share resources, get additional information and talk to the community in terms of educating them about homelessness um, and other types of issues though related to homelessness. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't answer the other question. <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, Ms. Sanchez, did you want to add anything or do you, do you feel like Mr. Rubenstein's answer was sufficient? Sure. I mean, Carol always has a lot of knowledge to share. Um, uh, Alejandro, you mentioned um, the police. You're absolutely right. You know, homelessness is not a, it's not a crime to be homeless, right? We meet people where they are. Um, as you know, um, recently uh, we had um, what defund the police. Um, NYPD is no longer part of um, you know homeless outreach. The homeless outreach unit has been disbanded. So now it's just you know their involvement is pretty limited. They're not out there. Um, it's breaking ground pretty much. Um, the street outreach um, that happens in New York City is done 24 seven, right? There's not a day that this doesn't happen. And we also have a BRC that does the subways 24 seven as well. 
So there's a lot of help, help for folks. That doesn't mean it's not challenging. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. It is a challenge indeed. Any other questions from members of, of the health committee, the transportation committee, or, or Ms. Mosso as a, as a board member? I, and Mr. Du. And Mr. Du, yes, Mr. Du. Well, Mr. Du is part of the transportation committee, so I want to include him in that statement. Mr. Du, the floor is yours. Can you hear me? You yes, hear yes me? we can. Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. Um, can you speak to uh, where you get your funding from uh, and what are the capacity limits of the different components within your organization? And I'm interested in how you do connect with the police department when they make uh, uh, an arrest or a contact, how do they actually know to get said individuals? How do they identify that those individuals need to get to your organization? How does that process work? Okay, so, okay, so there was a number of questions there. I think the first question that you asked me was about funding. Yes. So I know that I'm not gonna be able to tell you all the funding sources, but we have both city, state, um, and federal funding for all of our programs. If we had gone to the website, it will probably tell you where we get all our funding from the shelters. Okay. I can tell you that we get our funding from Department of Homeless Services, the city of which URI works in, in that agency. So that's direct, they subcontract with us to provide um, funding for the shelters. Other funding can come in from um, New York State Office of Substance Abuse Services. There could be some funding from New York State Office of Mental Health. Um, we also have private funding. So I, I think our funding is somewhere, it's multi-million. I, I don't want to quote because I'm not 100% sure, but it, okay. to run 160 programs has got to be a lot of millions of dollars. So we get it from all, all levels all levels and all different types of agencies, DYCD, probably all the city agencies we get funding from. Okay. The second okay. question, I remember the third question because that was about the police. What was the second question? I have so many questions. <laughs> I know, I know. So why don't I ask you the other question in terms of the police? So um, I'm not quite sure are you saying that if there's a homeless person, how does the police interact with a homeless person? What yeah, I, 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 I'm, I, I'm trying to understand how the police would refer someone to your organization as opposed to arresting them uh, uh, after they're identified as having whatever issue your organization can help with. How are the police officers trained to identify folks that are appropriate for your organization? as opposed to being arrested or some other inappropriate action? Um, I mean, I really think NYPD needs to answer that um, because I don't really know how they are trained. I can tell you that all of our shelters do have a partnership with the precincts so that we partner together so that they understand what we're all about. We understand what they're about. Um, we we do help each other so that if if the if the like a if there's an NYPD officer who is in the area of a shelter and there is a individual who may be doing something that that could be inappropriate certainly they would have the right to arrest the person and sometimes people need to be arrested and held accountable just because you're homeless doesn't mean that you shouldn't be held accountable right um but if they if they came upon somebody that was homeless and not associated with a shelter they would know of of to they could utilize even they can call the 311 or street outreach person to get them services into the assessment shelters because they just can't bring somebody into a shelter. Okay. The other question was your capacity. So our capacity in our shelters, we have a defined space of how much 
how many beds we are able to handle in our shelters. And unless there's more space, we can't go anymore. And the only way to, um, there, there is a process to get approval to determine if there even can be more space. And that would be both through DHS, Department of Homeless Services, and the state, New York State Office of Temporary Disability in Assistance. Currently, our shelters are at capacity. Magnolia, who was at the A-loft, capacity is 200 beds. So even if there were 25 more beds in the shelter, we could not take them because our license is for 200 beds. Opportunity's license is for 62 beds. And I know that Opportunity can't take any more beds because we have no space there. Um, so every that, shelter has a capacity limit. That, that's the point I was getting at, because the homeless population in this city is somewhat out of control. And we are trying to understand how these folks are potentially going to be accommodated. So you have those very strict limits. There are upwards of, I don't know, 70 or 80,000 homeless folk or families in the city of New York. And so we're so, trying to understand. So we're, yeah, we're um, it's important. Let me um, say this, this what you guys should be aware if you're not already aware, uh, we have a legal and a moral obligation to provide shelters uh, for folks, right? We cannot leave them on the street. So whoever reports to the intake, we have to provide a bed. You know, there was a lawsuit back in the day. We have to provide a shelter. Um, so New York City is a right to shelter city, unlike other places. It's called the Callahan degree. I know that you're busy on the web. If you were to Google Callahan degree, degree, you would see that this was the lawsuit that New York City is the right to shelter. So even if we can't take another bed, DHS is responsible. So if somebody presents themselves and they need a bed, then DHS, it becomes their problem and they figure it out. What ends up happening, like what happened with Canva, our first shelter was in the Park Slope area of Brooklyn in 1996, 95, somewhere around there. From there, as you can see, we've grown and we and we have now managing four more single shelters, six family shelters. So what happens is that DHS works with the current providers or possibly even new providers. Perhaps there's a request for proposal that comes out to say, we need to build more shelters. The question is, from a community perspective, not from a service provider, right? Is that the way we keep going? Do we keep building shelters or we, you know, do we look at affordable housing and supportive housing? But I think it was a year ago, Yuri, correct me if I'm wrong, maybe a year ago or two years ago, that our mayor made a commitment to build 90 something more shelters? So it's actually, um, Carol, what you're referring to is the turning the tide plan, right? The tide so plan, right. 90 borough based shelters. So if you're from Brooklyn, with, uh, barring any you know, residency restriction, um, we will offer the opportunity for you to uh, be placed in a shelter um, at the community board that you last um, resided in. So at places that historically have not had shelters, we have announced and we are building those um, high quality shelters. It's not just roofs over their head, but it's um, a lot of wraparound and social services. Uh, so shelter has improved a lot. It's not what it used to be. You know, we still have ways to go, but a lot of milestones have been uh, made. So just so that you get an idea of who we have on our staff. So we always have, we have senior administrators. We tend to have licensed social workers or a licensed mental health professional. We have case managers on site to help people manage putting the 2010 E packages together, get folks resources, get them mental health treatment, get them substance abuse treatment, um, getting them to take care of their medical concerns. Um, we have security on staff. Um, some, some sites have them as part of their own agency. Some of them have them contracted through security organizations. Um, 
And then we have what we call, they're called different things in different places, but maybe a client care or a residential aid that helps individuals with their daily living skills. Many of them don't know how to even do their own laundry, um, don't know how to budget. Um, so we take care of linens, we provide three meals a day, we provide services where they wash and we teach them how to do their own linen. Um, we have groups about how to take your medication, um, how to interview for a job, if you're going to get a job, if you're able to work, um, how to interview even for an apartment, how to present yourself. It, 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 it sounds extremely comprehensive. Do you have a sense of how many folk rotate through your system on an annual basis? Um, we, would, we would have that number. I don't have that number off the top of my head, but I can only talk for Canva. I don't know if Yuri would know system wide. There has been some great success. It, it, it sounds like it. It sounds pretty comprehensive. The community board recently approved a similar facility on Emerson Place in this district. It's a 80 some odd family type facility that's going to be built on Emerson Place. I don't know whether you have any affiliation or knowledge of that particular outfit and how it's connected. I don't know and I don't know if it's a DHS or if it's OMH, do you know? I have no idea of those acronyms. When, that doesn't sound like DHS. When was that? When did that happen? We what year was approved, it? We just approved it last month. Oh no, not DHS. <laughs> Sorry. It's probably so, the agency. I'm just going to let yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. yeah, Ms. Thurston had her hand up. I want to allow her to jump in. Thanks. And, you know, mostly I, I really, I think this has been really comprehensive and very helpful to hear. And I know, I know we want to get through this evening. So just in the interest of letting folks know where they can find more information, where do you think, where's the best place for us to point folks if they'd like to learn more about Canva? I think maybe the, the URL was in the chat, but is that the best way to get in touch um, or with DHS? Or would you mind sharing your contact information again in the chat? Yeah, I mean, basically, definitely going on Canva's website, but that's, you know, cold and dry. It, it really is canva.org. Sure. Um, I can certainly share my email address and Carol Ann knows how to contact me as well. Um, I'll put it in the. Um, well, thank you so much. And and I'll also just say, um, Ms. Sanchez, we definitely appreciate your input from DHS. I, I hope it, I hope you don't mind me saying even though it's better than it has been, we need to do a lot better <laughs> by our fellow Brooklynites and people who um, are housing insecure. And so while I really appreciate that, I think we're at really the beginning of what is going to continue to be a really hard journey. So we hope to see you both um, back here in the future and we'll likely continue to have some questions about how we can again support housing insecure folks in our district. I do want if to I give. Just, I, I do want I to just, give that the excuse me. Could I? I do want to give members of the public who attended an opportunity to raise the question tonight because I we haven't afforded that opportunity yet. Um, is there anyone who's a member of the public who is not a member of the of the of the community board who would like to ask a question of Ms. Rubenstein, Ms. Sanchez, or any of the others? Ms. Church? Um, I just want to um, say Caroline Todd had indicated she wanted to speak, but since I have your ear, I just want to say that on questions regarding affordable housing and um, using empty um, units to house uh, people who are homeless, those are questions that might be better directed to uh, HPD rather than um, a not-for-profit like CAMBA or even uh, DSS, DHS, which uh, URI represents. Carol is right. Uh, we do work closely with uh, HPD. As a matter of fact, some, so some of the shelters that we do open, um, 
sometimes include um, set asides, uh, so permanent housing for formerly um, homeless persons. Um, but we need both. You know, think of the think of um, you, you have a doctor, right? But you still need an emergency room. So we do agree. Um, there's no right to affordable housing. We do need more affordable housing, um, but we do the best that we can. We do need we do need it. But um, in the meantime, um, shelter, you know, as a last resort. Ms. Rubenstein, are you able to provide your email? I think Ms. Richardson is asking you for that. And I did. Oh, okay. It's up on top. Dude, I'll do it again. Okay, that might be helpful. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'll do it again, but it's right under Yuri. Okay. I'll do it again. So, Brandon, um, I want to thank you for inviting me to this meeting. I will certainly take these these details back to the land use committee meeting. We always talk about affordable housing and how it isn't affordable as it's currently designed based on the current AMI, even the percentages that are usually uh, included in many of our applications is higher than what the community can afford. And that contributes to the homeless problem. So we are always looking to get approval of apartments that are at rents that are affordable, affordable within our community. So this information is very helpful. If we have anything in writing, that would even be more helpful as we go about uh, having to communicate with more folks about the need for greater affordability. Thank you. This, this is Julie. This is Julia from Canva. Julia DiGiacomo. I just wanted to add one thing about the uh, supportive housing network. Um, if a person is homeless, they don't necessarily have to be living in a homeless shelter to have an HRA 2010E application completed for them. Most of the providers that work with Office of Health and Mental Health, if they're connected to service or a hospital, or if they are incarcerated, all of those persons have access to the same uh, database because we all submit things through the database. And the availability of housing, the match to housing would be made with through a vulnerability index that is completed by the person who is entering the application based on the client's functional limitations. So then there's a central system. Once that's entered in the system, their client is matched to an available housing unit. So if you have a client who doesn't want to enter the shelter system or you know of someone that is homeless, even if they were to be hospitalized, you can even work with the hospital social worker to have the uh, application submitted. And there's also something in New York State called Kaskina's Law, which would, uh, which would, the client would have to agree, but they don't have to necessarily leave the hospital until they are found and linked to an affordable housing unit in New York. Okay. Brandon, there was one thing I wanted to raise, if I could, sir. Mr. Harrison, it, you've just you've just joined us. If you could briefly introduce yourself, and if you could, if you could just ask, I'll give you one more brief question before we move on here. But, John Harrison, member of the committee, and just as um, I, I think I'm, I'm bound to do, um, officer of the Department of Social Services and former officer of DHS at one time or another, and before there was a DHS. So I just want to know what our colleagues at um, CAMBA, if it, it had been stated before I got here, and I didn't just get here, I've been since uh, half past six, but I've been listening and taking care of a couple of things around here. Um, uh, I just want to know a, a little bit about the position of our colleagues at CAMBA regarding um, a a component of the puzzle, which if all of you discussed it, I apologize if it happened before I entered the meeting at half past, but I haven't heard it since then. And that's the preventative piece, a la the kind of legislation that uh, Assemblyman, I think he's Assemblyman, Hevesy in Queens has been pushing for some time, which would essentially um, help to solve the issue of housing and homelessness at the front end by having individuals rent subsidized so that they never entered the shelter system. So you're asking what Canva is doing in terms of preventing that? 
being part of the prevent being part of the solution to homelessness yeah. okay yeah. so um and yuri may even be able to talk about that as well because from a city perspective but i do know that camba is one of the service providers along with another a, a number of other service providers in the city such as brc and project renewal and samaritan village um, just to name a few, that they belong to a coalition um, that um, does try to work with the governor um, and advocate for more supportive housing and other options other than just shelter. Shelter is a result of the bigger problem. Um, and so we have been trying to at least address it in that way. That's why campus opened up supportive housing a number of years ago, that it's just not about emergency housing. It's also about supportive housing. So right. we do. I'm sorry, Carol, but if I could, what I was really sort of zeroing in, because I did hear you mention that before, which is great. And I know of this work through the department and through the news, but I was really trying to get a, a feel for campus. I know you can't really probably speak to policy, but their their thoughts about this um, pending legislation of many years that is something that Hevesy has been pushing, others have been pushing in the state, in the capital, to help prevent people from having to enter the shelter system by having a, a guaranteed rent. Housing Stability Plus or Housing Support Stability or something, it has, you know, a typical name. I, I mean, I, I, I have the thoughts and I know what the agency has done. I, I don't think I can specifically say that, yes, I know our executive director and our leadership are actually dealing with that issue. I can confidently say that I know that they are been advocating for um, prevention of homelessness and supportive housing and making it a better city so that people are not homeless. Right. Okay. Right. That that makes. Sense. I, I I mean I can certainly get back to, um, Brandon. You're the. Ho I mean I certainly can get back to you guys in terms of specific stuff, and maybe even invite one of our community affairs persons to this group who can talk to that better than I can. I think that might be that that might be a good idea, so we can continue this conversation. I I, I don't want this to be the end, and know we have kind of a limited time to discuss these things in 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 the course of our meeting, and we have a few other things that we need to get to this evening. So, I, first of all, I, I and I or I, maybe I should say last of all, thank you very much for your presentation, and thank you everyone for your for your really uh, intriguing questions. I. I know there are several other things that we'll need to do about this, and we will make time at a future meeting to sit down and talk about this and several of our other presentations uh, to, to figure out some more concrete plans for moving forward. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Sanchez. Thank you, Ms. Rubenstein. Thank you, everyone, for joining us uh, this evening in that regard. Thank you. It was good to see you all again. Carol Ann will always, if you need anything, just keep in touch with us. We look forward to our next community board meeting. Um, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hey, um, Ms. Todd, I don't think I recognized you before, and I'm sorry. Do you want to introduce yourself briefly as a, as a member of the board and the transportation committee? Sure. Hi, I'm Caroline Todd. I live in Warham Hill and on the Transportation and Public Safety Committee. Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you very much for 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 coming, and and we're very honored to have you. Um, feel free to for anyone who's not on the health committee but on the board to stick around for the rest of our meeting. But we're going to dive into our liquor license review and uh, uh, go forward from there. Um, the Meeting tonight, we've got three liquor licenses up. Uh, the first full on premise is located at 63 Lafayette Avenue and is entitled Matshu LLC. Do we have somebody here from that location? Yes. Uh, Mr. Callahan and Mr. Dijon? Correct. Excellent. Um, is one of you able to present the application so that we can see it or is it... 
Or, uh, no. You're not. Okay. Well, the members of the committee, you should have a copy of this. And Ms. Church, is the board office able to present the, the application? Hey, can you help me? Because switching takes me forever. Thank you. No problem, but the folder appears to be empty. No. Let me see if I can find it. Just, just give us one second. Um, Brandon, we get we, the we link. Wait, can I make can I make the local hiring pitch as we wait? Absolutely. Hi, uh, this message is for everyone. Everyone who has a liquor license application today, it has what I'm about to say has no bearing on your application. It will not be taken into account, but we highly encourage, would love to see as part of your investment in our community that you hire locally and not just locally moved here five years ago, locally born and bred, locally brown and black people, not just undocumented people in the kitchen that we never see, but brown and black people up front, front of house. Um, we have an unemployment problem in this community. We have poverty. We have a near poverty problem, and it is highly concentrated in brown and black pockets. And so it would be nice that we all do something about it. We calculate that every year with the number of applicants, we could almost erase the unemployment issues in this community, but it doesn't usually play out that way. So we humbly request that you do your part. Thank you. Alejandro. Um, Mr. Callahan or Mr. DeYoung, while we wait, do you want to tell us a little bit about the location at 63 Lafayette? Sure, I will. So this is an on-premise liquor license application for 63 Matchew LLC doing business as 63. Um, that's formerly Scapello. Um, so what we're, we're doing is we're having a uh, an Italian uh, restaurant with specialty pizzas and a few Italian dishes. Um, it's a small location, uh, 11 tables, 39 seats, and a bar in the rear uh, with nine seats. Um, our hours will be 11 a.m. to 2 a.m., uh, the latest seven days a week. Um, and again, the, there's a bar in the rear with no outdoor seating. Uh, we will have background music and there is no outdoor seating. Um, you know, once the uh, pandemic is over, there will be no outdoor seating. Uh, we will be hiring 15 to 20 employees, and we the business is looking forward to working with Community Board 2 to get local people to work um, the restaurant. So that is something that we are definitely uh, interested in. Um, either way, we'll be hiring from the immediate area. So the owners here are uh, Mr. Matthew Shandell, and um, Mr. Shu DeYoung, who will be the on-site operator. Um, he's been in this business for a long time, so he'll be able to tell you the experience he has. Mr. Shandell has uh, currently six on-premise liquor licenses, um, and you, you just saw a list of them uh, on the presentation go by. So uh, he has a lot of experience too. Uh, so both will bring their expertise to this location uh, in what we believe will be one of many um, restaurants in the future with the same type of um, plan. Um, if you have any questions, we'd be glad to answer them. Any concerns with noise or issues with residents at the other locations? Uh, no. And at this location, actually, there's no one above us at the time. Um, but uh, Shu, I believe you, you, you spoke to some neighbors around um, and they seem to be very excited about the concept. They are, yeah. It's, I spent um, actually half a day there on Monday and I ran into actually a few that live in the neighborhood. So knowing that there's gonna be an artisanal pizza and sandwich shop there. Um, we're doing a coffee program too with Abbotsford Road, which is a Brooklyn roastery in the mornings um, just to you know, get people coffee on the way to, hopefully on the way to work and the, where the train is. Um, and yeah, people have been super supportive. Even the folks at Mr. Mango, which are next door, we've become pretty close with over the last few weeks. It's, um, are, are really looking forward to it. And so are we. Okay. 
Great. And I, I think we should take note of the fact this is kind of a commercial area with mixed use buildings and uh, the, uh, and it's across the street from, is that Kyler Gore? I think that's Kyler Gore, maybe, maybe not. Oh, um, but, uh, but the Brooklyn Plaza Medical Center is across the street from there, but it's a looks like a very commercial area. Questions from members of the committee? Any questions from members of the committee about this application? Just a quick one. When do you plan to open? Um, we're, well, I would say, fingers crossed, um, middle to end of April, early May would be ideal. Um, obviously, we're working with the elements as well, like everybody else sure. is, and want to be respectful of that. So um, obviously, the sooner the better. You know, We, sure. we haven't started to build out, obviously. Um, but um, the building has been really great with us, and the neighbors are so we're just hoping to build out. Great. Thanks. Sure. Any other questions from members of the committee or members of the board? Uh, finally, any, wait, Mr. Brandon, Verla. Brandon, I, floor sorry, is yours. I'm a little embarrassed. I'm a little embarrassed to ask these two questions because I momentarily checked out and you might have already answered them. Um, uh, how many people do you expect to employ and did you um, get signatures from residents in the building if there are residents? Okay, so uh, we're expecting to hire 15 to 20. Um, and we are very interested in working with the community board in hiring these people. Um, definitely all people from the area we would like to have. Uh, we did get some signatures. Uh, there are no residents above us right now. Um, so we have signatures from 61 Lafayette, 66, 63. Um, 65 um and then other people that were in the neighborhood and you could see uh i'm not gonna be able to see it because of my background here but i have a page with the signature actually she was holding it up right now okay uh, thank you no, we appreciate that is it is it does the board office have a copy of the, those signatures this church i, I believe I believe my office sent them with a menu. Um, I, but if I, I not, think I saw the I menu. Will... I think I saw the menu, okay. but I, I'm not sure if, if I saw don't have the signatures, signatures. I'll make sure uh, Carol Ann gets them in the morning. Okay. Thank you. And are there any other questions for this application? Ms. Church, did you have something no. you wanted to say? Yeah, I just want to say that we haven't been requesting signatures. Um, you know, because of the pandemic where, because it could sometimes interfere with social distancing, we've had to sort of waive that requirement. If we get signatures, great. If we don't, then, you know, I just ask that they make sure that they post and post as early as possible. Okay. I got a, a yeah, question so from- I'll, I'll get those to you. I, I got a question from Mr. Andrews offline because he's having some technical difficulties. Um, he would like to know specifically what what kind of ADA accessibility exists and will exist at this location, and particularly on the bathroom. Will that be an accessible bathroom that somebody with a wheelchair can access? And are there any are there any excess bathrooms in the location? Uh, yes, there are two bathrooms on the main floor um, in the plans right now that you should be able to see them on the plans. Uh, if you just scroll down just a little bit there, the two restrooms right there, they'll both be uh, ADA comp uh, accessible, um, as will the front entrance. Okay, so the front entrance will be, somebody can access that okay with a wheelchair. There's no ramp, is it, is it at the, the street level or do you have a ramp or something? There's, a, there's actually a, a ramp that was there from the, uh, so we're just gonna extend slightly more into the restaurant, um, but it's street level into a very um, you know, gradual ramp. So it's accessible 100%. Okay. Thanks, I saw Mr. Newmark may have had a question. Did you wanna ask something, Mr. Newmark? Yeah, thank you. Uh, just quickly, um, you may have addressed this about your uh, other locations and I apologize again for perhaps having tuned out. If someone were to approach you to say that they have some concern about noise coming out of your restaurant, 
um, what would be your approach? Oh, the immediate one would be to look things to exactly what they're saying and and turn the you know turn if it's music we would turn that down but we don't anticipate this is really a grab and go pizza place um, with a coffee concept so we're not anticipating you know excessive music but if they did we would 100 percent just be compliant and tell them we'd fix it you know if it's a loud person we'd ask them to turn their voice down if we happen to be music we would do that as well but we don't anticipate that having to be a problem because this isn't a my club or something like this. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Any questions from any members of the public for this application? Uh, I have a, I wanted to say something. Sorry, I'm um, trying to figure out who this is. Could you just state your name? I'm just, I'm a member of the public. Um, I'm on, um, I'm on oh, file. Vito, are you Vito Randazzo? Yes, I currently great, own great. a Yellow restaurant, and I want to wish the new owners lots of luck on Lafayette Avenue. Uh, Thank you. You know, doing the coffee and the pizza. Uh, I do pizza also, and we need more good pizza in the neighborhood. But I want to wish them a lot of luck. Uh, you know, appreciate you know. that. Thank you, Vito. Anything you guys need for help, let us know. Thank you. Uh, Nicole has a question. Oh, Miss McKnight. Uh, yes. Hi, uh, uh, this is my first meeting. Uh, nice to meet you all. Not Miss McKnight, Miss Murray. Nice to meet you, Miss Murray. <laughs> Please, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Also, Vita Vendato is my uncle's name. I was really confused for a second. Um, <laughs> I was like, what are you doing here? Um, I was just uh, asking if uh, I've been at that area before, but I can't remember what it's like. But is there like any bike parking out near there? And if not, are you planning on installing that as part of uh, any upgrades to the street? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't, I haven't even considered any bike parking. Um, I know there's just by the, by the looks of it here, there's a tree, but across the street, I believe there's a city bike area, but, um, there's a bike rack, right, right, right by that tree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I can see that in the Google, um, uh, sheet. Yeah. That's been there for a few that, years. That's been there a while. Uh, uh, there's a question in the chat. Is there an affiliation that you have with the Fulton bid? <clears throat> I don't know, Mike, is it, I mean, uh, Robert, is that you? Is that Matt and you or not? I'm not aware of it. Uh, no. Okay. That answers the question. Any other questions for this application? Uh, Miss uh, Cassandra? Magzaman? Hi. I, I'm sorry. I hope I pronounced that okay. <laughs> that was close. Um, I just wanted to respond. There um, is a ton of bike parking right by BAM, which is only about a block away from Scapello, the, the location of their, their new place. So, um, yes, there's lots of bike parking right there. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I would add if you're planning on doing any delivery um, and using delivery people, whether that's your own people or Grubhub or whatever, um, there's been a lot of bicycle thefts from um, the delivery people. Um, and so they will need, if you're planning on this, a uh, safe place to, to store their bicycles while they're picking up orders from you. Um, it's been a major problem for delivery folks. Thank you so much for that. That I didn't even consider that, so I appreciate it. You're welcome. Any other questions for this application? Um, Church? Just a quick comment. Um, based on Mr. Dew's question, I want to encourage every um, restaurant owner in that's opening up in CB2, whether it's along Myrtle Avenue, uh, in line with the Myrtle Avenue bid or Fulton Street, you have the Fab Alliance to please reach out to the bid managers. Um, they'll be coming your way i'm very sure but bits do add a lot of value to the district and to your business by their services so um i will reach out to um robert and whomever else to pass on the um relevant information for your particular bits yeah thank you you could just yeah email it to mike uh, he'll put it on my desk and, uh, and i'll get it to uh shoot at virtual desk huh <laughs> all right um 
Any other questions on this application? I'll ask for a motion in that case. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. And from Jessica, second from John. Any other, any discussion on the motion? Not hearing any discussion, I'll do, I'll individually call everybody out. Uh, Mr. Varela? Yay. Uh, Mr. Newmark? In favor. Ms. McKnight? Approve. Um, Ms. Thurston? Approve. Uh, Andrews has told me that he's in favor. Um, and uh, Ms. Richardson, are you able to indicate either in the chat? Oh, she's in favor too. Okay. Um, and Mr. Harrison? Mr. Harrison. <clears throat> I believe that was Mr. Harrison indicating he's in favor. In favor, yes. Okay, and I vote in favor too. So that's that's everybody. Thank you very much for your presentation. Good luck. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Come for a slice and some coffee. Everybody, stay safe, please, Love and healthy. Thank you all. Okay. The next application we have up is two seventy five Park Avenue, Body by Brooklyn. Do we have somebody here from that location. Yes, you do. Hi. Yes. Hello. Uh -huh. huh. Hello. Um, could you briefly introduce yourself? I see the name up is Wipawadi Armenio. Yes, Wipawadi but... Armenio. Um, are you all the proprietors of this app of, of this location? That's right, and I'm Terrence first. Okay, great. Um, do you all have the ability to present the application, or do? It looks like the office has taken that up. All right, so we can show it. Would you? I can't see the screen right now. I don't know if you guys could see that. We have it. You can just start to talk through your application. Okay. Okay, okay so we're looking to take over Body by Brooklyn Park Avenue Health Club. Uh, it's a European day spa that's been in the facility that's been in the community for 14 to 15 years now. Um, we staff about 14 employees. Um, we uh, have a lounge, a wet lounge, 10 treatment rooms. We're about 7,300 square feet. Um, and both Tuki and myself, we've been managers on and off here for some time. So we feel that we know what works for the the company as well as the community and what will you know help us succeed in the business our main focus going forward once things are approved and we move forward is to focus more on a luxury making it more luxury than it is and also focusing on health and wellness mental health that is also um and i don't remember your name but 70 percent of our employees are from within the community and they are minorities in the community as well um yeah so could you clarify like what's going on you indicated that you're going to take it over are you have you been operating this this business up until now uh -huh. and, and how long have you all been operating it so as a manager on and off I've, I've taken time away to go and get experience in manhattan and luxury spas um so i've been on and off the manager roughly seven years and Tuki has been the manager, I would say, close to a year at this point. Yeah, I started uh, 2019 in October. Yeah. Okay. Here. Yeah. Right. We got a number of, uh, of community concern uh, letters uh, in regards to this application. And perhaps it might be good to start off with explaining, like, sort of uh, the level of interaction you've had with the folks in the building up to this point. And I, I think some of the, the main points that came out of it is, um, are you presently serving wine at this location? Do you have an existing license to do that? And it seems like there was some kind of a, um, there was some kind of a flood and a, a couple of fires that have occurred in the last couple of months at this location. So if you can provide some details on what that, what that was about, that, that might be a good way to help uh, start the discussion. Sure, sure. So uh, no, we aren't selling any alcohol or wine right now. As far as the uh, the smoke, it was smokes from the dryers. They're 14 years old. Uh, that's one thing we plan to replace immediately once taken over the business. 
Um, it's just the building in itself needs a lot of, or the the business in itself needs a lot of upgrades. A lot of the 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 equipment is exactly 14, 15 years old. Um, so a lot of upgrades need to be done. When you say taking over it, what what are you what are you, what are you taking over? You're taking you, over Park Avenue Health Club, the, the name, the corporation. Oh, okay. So it's, it has a different owner right now, and you're you're going to become the owner of this location. That's right. Okay, I see. Um, so it, it seems like some of the people there are, are who have uh, who have com who have complained are indicating that there is some kind of wine service going on. Do you have like private events that you private parties that you rent out the place to, or uh, do you have any idea why they might be under that impression? I'm not sure. I know that you know the smoke that occurred. Um, it, 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 and obvious and rightfully so, um, because it was, you know, the, the smoke and the fire department, you know, the, they had to evacuate the building. Um, I'm not sure why they would mention that part of it, but I, I see why they could be a bit deterred and upset. Well, was, was it that there was a private party that was going on at the location that, or or is it your position that basically you never sell any you never sell any wine you never sell any alcohol you do not have an existing liquor license that's I'm just trying to kind of, okay that that's your position we will have an opportunity for the public to make comments here and to to get to let their voice be heard and we're going to do this all in a very orderly fashion like we always do but um I I just wanted to kind of get get your un present presentation of of the facts and understanding and I, I guess so. There's been two fires at this location, and both of them occurred with respect to the dryers at the at, at, within the health facility. Right. So one was the dryer, which is 14 years old. Um, the second one, it wasn't, a, and both were smoke. Um, so the the when washing the sheets, um, they're then put into the dryers, um, and of course, because we do massages, the oil and the sheets mixed together create a smoke. And so that would make the fire detectors go off. Um, and in one incident, thankfully, I was here. Um, and the second incident, again, that's when it, it, it happened six hours later, and it was smoke from the actual sheets and the oil mixed together from the heat. Um, they were removed from the dryer. It actually happened in a bin. What time of day did these occur? Uh, the... The most recent one, uh, we closed at 7, and the smoke started at uh, 1 a.m. in the morning, six hours later. Okay. And so, uh, when, uh -huh. it, could you perhaps give, like, a, 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 a maybe a little bit more of a, a, an explanation about how you view the, the liquor license to operate here? I saw in the application that, that there was going to be um, an element of uh, private parties, DJs, events. And I can tell you from experience on this committee that probably the single most uh, common source of complaints that we've had in the community for all locations have been private parties, special events, DJs, and events like that. So could, could you just give more color on what that what you envision in that regard? And why is a full liquor license necessary for your location, not just beer and wine? Right. So um, the previous owner or the, the owner that's here now, she in the past did have elaborate parties. That's not our vision. Again, our vision is to go upscale. Um, we will have private events, but it'll be based around health and wellness and, of course, the spa um, industry. Um, and we and, and it's been known over years that our clients, you know, prefer, prefer wine, prefer um, alcohol. It's, it's a huge source of revenue as well for the company, um, more so beer and wine. Um, from my knowledge from the past, we hardly sell any beer at all. And wine is few far in between as well. Okay. And what kind of security do you have in your facility? Uh, well, as far as our daily security, of course, we have cameras. Um, we have an alarm system. Um, that's on a daily. If it's as far as, say, like a, a, a bridal party, a small event, it's it would be any myself, the manager, or Tuki herself, um, to ensure nothing gets out of hand. 
So I, because I, I just noticed that um, you checked off in the application that you were not planning to use any security personnel. Um, right, not not personnel, but we do have the cameras and the alarm system, and Tuki or myself, we will be here to supervise. Okay, and just so that I completely recognize um, the the community complaints the best that I can, there seemed to be a concern about people smoking outside of your location. Um, and I, I, I don't have the firsthand knowledge, as I'm sure we'll hear something about it from the community, but um, do, you have any, I, do you have any plan for how you might address concerns or complaints like that from the community about people congregating outside the location, smoking? You know, typically you see that with a bar, not necessarily a, a health club, but since you're, off, you're, you're seeking to have a, a liquor license, it's, um, it, it, it's sort of, uh, seems to be a, a, a concern that, uh, that might be might be heightened if, if this is granted. Right, absolutely. So um, Tuki and I actually, we just discovered this last week. There were matches left in the front of the building as far as a few cigarette butts. We are underneath um, a residential building. So we've noticed a lot of the residents actually smoke from the sidewalk. There's also a tray, an ashtray, um, to assist with the residents, you know, um, ensuring that they put their cigarettes out in the right place. So what, from what we see, majority of the smoking cases are from the residents in the building. Okay. Um, so that's something that we would have to speak with, of course, the landlord and guards to. Aside from the landlord, what kind of conversations have you had with residents of the building about the liquor license or about any of these incidents to date? I, I want to get a sense of the level of engagement that, that has existed in the past, from your opinion. Yeah, so immediately um, we were in contact with the building manager, um, so he can provide the correct information to give to the tenants to let them know that it, it wasn't fire, it was more so smoke than anything that set off the, um, the detectors. Um, so we communicate directly to the building managers, of course, and they communicate to the residents. In, in the course of the liquor license, have you been able to speak with any of the residents about the liquor license? And, and did, you, did you hear any concerns expressed from the residents yourself? I have not. And no, we haven't received any concerns either. Okay. Um, members of the committee, do you have any questions for this application? Uh, this is just for members of the committee at this point. Yeah, I have, I have a few, Brandon. Uh, sure. Sorry, I didn't see you, Jessica. You can you can go ahead. Oh, sure. Yeah, no problem. Sorry. Um, so just a few points of clarification. So this is um, explicitly a transfer of a license, correct? So are you saying that there is currently a full on-premise license that the, that the previous owner has, or do they just have a beer and wine license that you are seeking to transfer and expand? It's a full license. Okay. Um, okay, and then I wanted to ask you, just to follow up on some of the concerns we heard, have you had, other than those two smoke-related incidents, have you had any violations of the fire code in this site? No. Okay. During uh, members of the community, we will open it up in a, f in a few minutes. Um, okay. Have you had private events either rented out or not during COVID? No, we have not. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Newmark. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, some of it is um, due to my not understanding the concept. Um, you are a, I don't know, you have a variety of health club um, services that you, you offer. Um, is there a dining room that the facility has that people can sit down in and eat the meals that your menu um, offers? That's correct. Uh, my second question is, uh, in your, on your website, um, I, well, I understood you, in response to Mr. Smith earlier in the discussion, said that um, uh, you're not aware of any wine ever being served in the facility. Is that correct? Correct. 
Okay. On your VIP suite description on your website, which I'm looking at right now, it says that you can indulge in uh, a variety of uh, treats, including champagne. Mm -hmm. So isn't champagne a form of wine? It is, but at the time, it's not being served. The only thing that was being served in the VAP suite is the food up until we weren't able to allow food indoors. I see. So putting down a bottle of champagne on your website um, when that wasn't being served was a um, untruth. Well, well, the website hasn't been updated, correct? Uh-huh. Okay. I'm, I'm satisfied. I know how I'm going to vote. Thank you. Any other questions from members of the committee? <clears throat> okay. I'm going to ask the uh, members, of, let, let me just make sure one more time, any members of the committee, I, I think we have no more questions from members of the committee. Um, for members of the public, I will ask you uh, just to observe a couple of things, because we, we have, we've, we've had experience with a number of these different discussions about different um, circumstances where people have uh, concerns about liquor license applications. Please try to keep your conversation short and to the point. Please try to not to repeat concerns that other members of the public express. We're really open to listen to you and please try to keep your uh, concerns within about two minutes or so. But uh, at this point, uh, the floor is yours. And um, Ms. Magzaman, uh, I, I'd be more than happy to recognize you. I, I see you've been very eager to, to speak and um, the floor is yours. Great, thanks very much for the opportunity to speak. I'm Kelsey Maximin. I'm here on behalf of the 275 Park Avenue Tenants Association. And with all due respect to the managers who just spoke, um, I, I believe you're just not adequately informed regarding what's been happening. But my neighbors and I are extremely concerned about the potential for the liquor license as the spa has had two fires in the past six weeks, late at night, the first was November 15th at 10.30. The second one was January 1st at 1.30 a.m., during which no fire alarms or smoke detectors went off. Subsequently, the spa was cited with FPS3 on January 1, which is a failure to maintain standpipe sprinkler fire alarm system in good working order. That's a violation of SC901.6. Um, equal, equally importantly, many spa goers and people hanging around outside of there enter and exit without masks, which is, is just unacceptable. It's terrifying. Um, last, the past parties have resulted in blasting music until up, to, up until about four or 5 a.m dancing and screaming outside of our windows and littered sidewalks and courtyard. Our building is populated with young children and working professionals and all of this causes an extreme disruption to our quality of life. Providing a liquor license to this highly inadequately managed business will serve to further endanger the tenants living in the 123 residential units and it is our sincere request that you take all of this into consideration prior to granting this license. Thank you again for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Ms. Magzaman. Um, I'd like to get the community's concerns in a group, so I'm also going to recognize the next community member. And, um, and then at, at the end of this, Mr. Andrews has sent me a question which he wants to ask about ADA accessibility, so I'll get to that as well, too. Um, Ms. Ms. Murray, um, would you like to make a, a, a to, to raise a question or comment? Oh, you know, I never lowered my hand. Um, I'm going to do that now, so no. Fine. Uh, let's see. At this point, I I, I will I, I'll ask the 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 applicants to if if they'd like to respond to the the points that were made by Ms. Magzaman. Um, just keep in mind, in in all of these discourses, you know, your comments should be directed to the chair, as as Ms. Magzaman. The same would apply to her. Um, it particularly uh, some of the concerns that you expressed and, um, and and your in ability to enforce covid-19 restrictions in your in your your spa um, what what is your what is your comment on that um, well for starters as far as covid anyone knows even looking at us now 
we do we and it's on the door we require all masks upon entering the facilities temperature checks are done at check-in as well as covid waivers and general waivers are are completed i'm not sure whom she may have or, or whom there was leaving out of the facility without a mask on but we take it extremely serious even if i bring you to my front desk now my front desk staff we all remain with mask on throughout the entire day so that's in regards to COVID. Um, in regards to any parties, I would like a date and time. Um, pre in previous years, probably um, through the current owner, there were parties. Um, as of recently, I would love a date or time where there has been parties or people partying outside or anything of that nature. I would love to confirm that. Um, as far as smoke detectors, um, the first incident in the actual dryers, um, there was smoke and the actual fire department came. No one actually called the department. They were immediately brought up to date as far as the detectors. Um, and then the second time, they came on their own because the alarm system went off. Okay. Um, before we get back to Ms. McZaman, I, I want to ask you the question about ADA accessibility. Are, is your facility ADA accessible? Is, is it at street level? Is there a ramp? Is there an accessible bathroom inside? And to what degree can someone with a wheelchair access the entrance and the bathrooms? And are there any access bathrooms? Yes, they're all ADA approved with a ramp as well as um, two ADA bathrooms on the main floor. Okay. Um, before I go back, I, I, I'll, Ms. McZaman, because you're the only member of the community who has raised your hand, I will give you an opportunity to make an, one other comment, um, but I, I just want to check, is there any other member of the community who, who wanted to make a comment about this application? Right, I'm not seeing any. So, Ms. McZaman, if you if you can go ahead, if you can, if you want to have another brief comment, please feel free to do so. But remember to please keep your response directed to me and, and not to the applicants. Okay. Um, I am here on behalf of our Tenants Association, which is probably why the other people are not present at this time. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to share my screen, but this is the piece of paper that is hanging in our lobby, clearly stating that they do not have functional alarm systems or sprinklers. I'm not making this up. I'm happy to, if you, um, I can email it to all of you. I can, if you can help me share if my If you can screen. email it to the board office, that might be, might be helpful to, to, to document okay. it. I can do it right now if you want. Um, when, whenever you get the chance. It's, it's okay, fine. but I mean, I, I just, I'd like to make it clear. This is, this is nothing personal. This is not, it's just, we are really scared. And after the second fire on New Year's Day, I also have pictures of the huge chunks of black charred, I don't know what, that were all over the front of our sidewalk until one of us went down and cleaned it up. I mean, this wasn't just smoke. Um, and the fact, again, that they don't have operating fire detectors and you have 123 apartments above is just, it's, it's, unacceptable to all of us. So thank you again. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your for your um, comments, Ms. McZaman. Um, I think at this point, I'll take an opportunity to ask the committee if they would if anyone on the committee would like to make a motion either way. Gary. Harry, what's your motion? I'd like to, I was just unmuting myself. I'd like to make a motion to not approve the quest. Second, second that motion. I second that motion, Mr. Chair. Discussion on the motion. Uh, Ms. Thurston. Yes, I imagine others feel similar to me, so I'll be concise, but I just want to emphasize the community pushback we've received has been I think very clear and re relatively specific in terms of the complaints and um, the fact that I did ask a question that I, it sounds like was not answered entirely truthfully about fire safety is very concerning. 
Um, and I think that this is our duty as the, the committee to listen to the community and um, not approve this application. So I encourage my fellow committee members to join me in that. Though I do have a question for Brandon and Carol Ann about, you know, we always kind of get into this um, about the appropriate way to handle disapproving this application. So I'm curious if you have thoughts on that, but I um, just wanted to voice that I'm very much opposed to this application. Okay. I mean, we have a motion, my opinion would be, we have a motion on the table and, you know, at the conclusion of discussion, we should vote on the motion and that will convey what the community committee's action is. If we vote to disapprove the application. If you vote in favor of it, that's an expression that we are in favor of disapproving so. the application. If we do yeah. not, if the motion fails, and it goes the other way that doesn't mean we approve the application that means that we the motion failed and someone would have to make another motion as to what to do Ms. Right. church do you have any other comments to add on, on jessica's question uh none related to the vote but after i have some questions okay mr varela so um sorry i'm just reading in the comment yeah so someone keep Someone is posting about what the website says. Okay. Uh, I, I'm curious about prior to this transfer application, Caroline, can you tell us, have there been complaints? Have they been accumulating over the years? This is the first I hear of this particular business being problematic. So I'm, I'm just wondering if, if, uh, if you have any other information to share. So many years ago, and I was trying to see if I can find it, uh, maybe seven years ago, um, at the closest, there were a lot of complaints. Um, there were lots of parties. There was a famous toga party that made the news. Um, and uh, we were getting complaints from the residents upstairs. Um, but it was not, if I can remember correctly, it really ha didn't come before this committee. It went before the land use committee because the spa needs to have um, a variance um, on the uh, physical culture establishment um, P a PCE at uh, the border standard of appeals. And that's when those issues came up. Um, so have I heard about parties there? Yes about alcohol being served there yes but the last time i heard anything it was some time ago when you say you've heard about parties how recently have you heard about parties being there Ms. church well last thing i heard i i think it was at least seven years ago okay i came to our office i i just want to clarify that okay all right. Any other Brendan, uh, members of the committee Brendan, have any discussion points, Mr. Yeah, Varela? I just, yeah, I just want to say real quick: um, is is it just to be clear? Is it the case that the applicants state that there is a fire system or fire safety system in place, and the community member is saying that it's the exact opposite that there is no fire system or safety system in place, whether sprinklers or an alarm system? I want to clarify that is. Because that's a, that's sort of the, the crux here of the issue. Oh, I, I think it's one issue that that that's been raised. I, I I and you're entitled to your opinion as to whether you feel it's the crux, but the, right. yeah, I meant that particular issue. The, right. That seems to be that one is saying it exists, and the other is saying it doesn't exist at all. That 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 seems to be my understanding. Miss um, McSamon was clear about uh, her feeling that there is a note posted in the the building that. That indicates that there is no fire uh, alarm system, and I'm so sorry to interrupt you. I'd like to just we, if we'll recognize you in just a second. I'm very sorry. I I, I understand the applicants are, are are representing that there is a fire alarm system that exists there oh, in the in the location. Before we get to that, let's just take a step back for a second. So. That that seems to be my understanding of this. It, does anybody on the committee have a different understanding about what what's been presented? No, sir. Okay. Can I state something, by the way? Sorry, who is this? This is Terrence speaking. Oh, the you the, the I'm sorry, I can't see because of the mask. Sorry. 
Um, no, I can, can also go. I can also provide documentation from the fire alarm system that we pay on a monthly basis. I can also provide an invoice when we replace the upgrade alarm systems two to three weeks ago. So where this is coming from, I'm not sure who created this post in the in the lobby, but I can provide all documentation that shows that we pay our fire alarm system company as well as we pay to upgrade our alarm system three weeks ago. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I, I I think we we have the we have your representation. We have the representation from Ms. McZaman. And just to be clear, also, I I don't think we as a as a committee devoted to health liquor licenses, um, our decision is rested solely on the existence or lack of a, existence of a fire alarm system. Um, just to get back to the committee discussion on the issue with the committee, I I'm personally concerned about the fact that probably foremost that the the applicants are indicating that there's no alcohol at this place and the website's indicating there is alcohol at this place. And it, it, it sort of, to me, kind of gets at the credibility of the applicants when they're saying one thing and the community is saying something else too. Um, that's really the heart of my concern about that. Did any other members of the committee have any other uh, answer or, or, or concerns? on this application I, I, I mr did, harrison thank you i just wanted to um get back to something that um jessica raised which i thought was a very good point i'm sure it was made clear but i just want to reiterate that if i understand her issue it's really i believe jessica a non-issue at this point because of uh, barry's motion was a positive statement to um disapprove right yeah, so we don't I, know. I i understand yeah i appreciate it though Right, right. So uh, about your other issue, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, I've heard all of the statements and it, it does, as we are apt to get from time to time, it may be only every couple of years, but it, it does get to be a kind of um, point counterpoint thing. Um, my concerns with this aren't um, primarily with whether or not um, the fire safety is proper as it as it as the, it seems to be the applicant's point of view and not proper as it seems to be the resident association's point of view but um along the way you jessica uh barry alejandro have raised things which in my mind um raise flags and it's it's sort of a cumulus cloud effect it's not any one thing but there just seem to be red flags and I have to say, maybe this is just my my idiocy and my wood headedness or my old fashionedness, but um, Barry sort of raised the biggest flag for me right at the beginning when he said something like, I don't quite understand the application because it's a spa or a health thing and it's serving alcohol. And um, to me, that it's, in a, you all know that I'm not anti alcohol, but there seems to be a disconnect just from the start in the concept and so um I, what am i trying to get at i'm i'm quite uncomfortable with the application okay sorry any other discussion from members of the committee on the application um, i do have a, Ms. i do Ms. have a question miss mcknight yes the floor is yours so if i recall the prior owner already has um, a license to serve alcohol is that correct that's correct that's right. Okay, and they're just asking to continue to do what the prior business was already doing, but we have concerns around um, safety and also, um, oh, okay, someone just put the picture up front. Okay, around safety and also the type of parties that they're having, but the the new owners are indicating that they will not have those type of parties. So is is there um, the ability to, if we agree with the motion to not accept this for them to come back if they are able to prove to us that um, they do have uh, safety measures in place? Because I'm new to this, I, I want I, to know. That, that's a completely fair question. I mean, I think from, from our standpoint, um, if if we vote to disapprove the application, 
the the next step for the 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 license is that it goes to the executive committee the executive committee will make a decision as to whether they agree with us and then it, the the applicants will go to the state liquor authority and consider and the state liquor authority will have the ability to either grant them the license or deny them the license knowing that the community board has has voted um, to disapprove the license in that circumstance if the it, it could be that the state liquor authority says we're going to disregard what the community board says and decides to issue them the liquor license and, and that may be the the way that things go um it could be that the state liquor authority decides for them not to to do that and i think that it, at that point there's a process that it, the the applicants can could potentially decide to raise a, a different application for a liquor license in the future come back and 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 have a presentation um at that point we 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 typically don't um, reconsider the same license because there's a timing component for when things go to the state liquor authority. I don't know, Ms. Church, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Am I muted? Not okay. anymore, no. <laughs> okay. Um, I, 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 what, what you said is, 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 is um, very much on point. Um, so I just want to say to the committee, if if there's a propensity to vote no, you need to be specific with your reasons why. Um, and um, applicant can, of course, um, correct some of the issues and, and return to committee. Um, and hopefully will then have support of the residents. Not necessary, not necessary, but I'm saying so. Um, so those would be the, the the option if the committee was to vote no. If the committee was to vote yes, then it would proceed as usual. Yeah, I, I really, I, yes, I really but. do think, and that's a good point, Carolyn, that any follow up should really involve engagement with the um, with with the resident association. Um, typically, we get applications where the re, the the location has has already had conversations with the resident association and there's been some attempted at discourse and there's been some attempt at reaching a resolution doesn't always work out but there's there's usually some attempt um and i i'm not really completely seeing that in this in this situation um but i think in terms of the point barry do you want to basically address the the reasoning for your motion and i can add in anything else that we we feel and then we can take a vote to see how everybody else on the committee feels about it you're on mute Barry. no he's good you're so muted okay. sorry yeah since carol ann brought up the um request for specific reasons for a no vote. If if I were to withdraw the motion, and if someone put in a motion for approval, and the motion was not approved, we've never had to give specific reasons for why we are not approving approval. Why? why? So, so isn't that true? Because if that's the case, then I would just as soon withdraw it and see if somebody puts in a motion to approve it. And then I'll vote against it. I we, we already have things. your motion on the table. It's been seconded. We need to vote on this motion, Barry. Can, okay. you, can well, you just give the reasoning behind I'm your motion? I'm concerned about the uh, credibility of the prospective uh, owners of the business based on the differences of opinion of fact between them and the Tenants Association and the differences between what their website states with regard to liquor being served and their consistent statements that it's not being served and it's not served, and that it's just an old website. So okay. that, that gives me grave concern about their credibility going forward. And when it okay. comes to potential fire safety, if I can't believe them in terms of drinks, um, and the building burns down and somebody dies, uh, I would not like to think that I contributed to that. Those are my reasons. Okay. okay. Last comment, Mr. Varela. Thank you. I, I share Barry's concerns about fire safety. It's a big 
fear of mine living in an old building in Brooklyn. I um, empathize with the community. I would like to point out, which is probably why I will abstain from the vote, is that um, two of the big issues are predicated on some on sort of uh, factors that could go one way or another. If in fact they have not updated their website and they are new business owners, then we're holding them accountable for a website that's outdated about the drinks, number one. Number two, if they show the receipts and that they have a system in place that you know, refutes the posted letter in, that hall, you know, in, a, in a hallway, then there go two of the three things, right? Now, the very fact that there's you know, these images that we just saw of charred material on the sidewalk brings up the credibility, and that's why I'm leaning towards abstention. But I would like to point out that two of the three issues that have come up could go one way or another. Okay, thank you, Mr. Varela. At this point, I'm gonna take everybody's vote. Um, I already have Mr. Andrews's vote. Um, uh, well, I'm not sure if I have Mr. Andrews' vote. Mr. Andrews, if you can let me know, and the motion is to disapprove. So if you vote yes, that means you want to disapprove the application. If you vote no, that want, means you want to approve, or that means you do not want to disapprove the application. And and so I, I just want to be clear about that. Yes means disapprove. Um, no means I don't want to disapprove. So, uh, Mr. Andrews, you can let me know about that. I'll call everybody out by 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 name, and we'll we'll vote on this on this application. Mr. Andrews votes yes, by the way. So he he votes to disapprove. Mr. Varela. Thing. Mark. Yes. Thurston. Yes. Mr. Harrison. Yes. Uh, Ms. McKnight. Abstain. A. Uh, Ms. Richardson. Ms. Richardson votes yes. I also vote yes. So the motion to disapprove is approved. Uh, did I miss anyone? I don't think I did. Okay. Thank you, Jessica. All right. Thank you all very much. And again, you know, I, I would just I, I would offer to you, you all the applicants that while we voted to disapprove your application, that the the conversation forward, we would really encourage you to engage with the local residents association. And hopefully there is a, a situation where someday you can come back here and we can have folks in agreement and Perhaps there won't have been any recent fires or, or issues at the location, and, and we can try to uh, take another approach at this application. So thank you very much for coming, and we, we appreciate your time and, and the explanations you've given to us. Ms. Church, do you have anything further you want to add? Just really quickly, I want to answer Barry's question as to why um, an explanation. The state legal authority is predisposed to approve based on, on court cases. Um, and so there must be some substantive reasons why a license is being denied. So if we're gonna go that way, that's why we need the specific, specificity. I'm a little tongue tied tonight. Thank you, Ms. Church. I wanna keep things moving along and I know we do have another application this evening. Um, we have a, no, we don't have eight ten. Um, Fulton Street, Hungry Ghost. Uh, is that is that the case that we we're up to renewals? Is that the case, Ms. Church? Or no, we have another two seventy Vanderbilt. Two seventy Vanderbilt. Thank you very much. Brooklyn Hero Shop. Do we have anybody here from that location? Uh, yeah, that's me. Hey, oh, all right, Mr. Randazzo. Okay, uh, Mr. Randazzo. Um, do you want to go ahead with describing your application and we'll we'll find a way to present it here? Okay. Uh, I thought everybody should have their, uh, their uh, my uh, Anthony Caraballo should have sent everybody the notes. I'm opening up a sandwich slash coffee slash uh, retail market uh, in the old premises of Mason May. Uh, I am doing a tavern license, which means that I will only be serving uh, beer and wine on premises and cans and bottles of beer to go. And I will be opening up in about 10 days. I will start to have about five to 10 employees and those employees will be 
some of the employees that I let go of my other restaurant, which is Graziello's restaurant, a lot of waiters and waitresses that I let go, I'm bringing them along to my new place to give them current employment, uh, current employment. And I know you guys stress about having local people. Um, the people that I am bringing in uh, are local people who live in the area, uh, including all my 20 to 30 employees at my other restaurant. Okay. The, uh, I, I think the first question that I would have is just, can you describe the outdoor por portion of this, of, of this location? I, it, I noticed that there are going to be 10 tables and it looked like with 20 seats and it looked like this is a residential neighborhood. Um, and, um, I think naturally we're going to want to have the, the same questions you heard before about ADA accessibility, accessible bathroom, accessible front door. So if you can touch upon that. Absolutely. Of course. And, and then also like what, what interaction have you had with the local residents? Uh, as, as far as tables and chairs, I haven't uh, put any permits right now. I'm taking advantage of the program. The city uh, is given us to use up the streets and the sidewalks free of charge, of course, which uh, before I owned the restaurant, Mason May had a permit for the tables and chairs. After the city uh, gives us, you know, this this time to use up the streets and the sidewalks, I will decide, on, you know, if there is a market to put tables and chairs. It is a commercial building. Uh, there's two stores on the ground floor. I think there's four apartments above. Uh, it is off the corner of DeKalb Avenue, as you see in the pictures. Uh, so, but uh, my first order of business, as soon as March comes, I will take a portion of the street to put tables and chairs and leave eight feet of the walkway on, on the Vanderbilt Avenue side uh, for pedestrian walking. And when I said 10 tables, I meant the street and sidewalk, not only on the sidewalk. As far as this ADA, I'm in a bind. Uh, I am in a landmark building. Uh, I do have a 36 inch ramp to get a wheelchair in. I will not be able to have them use the bathroom. Uh, but since I own the restaurant, about 500 feet away, which it is ADA uh, compliant. I will let people know who have uh, have problems using the bathroom uh, to use my other restaurant uh, conveniently. Where is this other restaurant located? You said it's 500 I, feet away. Is it like across the street or is it down the block? It's down the block, 232 Vanderbilt Avenue. It's uh, Graziella's restaurant. Okay. All right. All right. So to, to summarize, then your, your restaurant is ADA accessible to get in and out. But if in order to use the, the restroom, if someone with a wheelchair needed to do that, they would have to go uh, 500 feet down the block to the other location. Only because of the landmark uh, situation. We took over an existing coffee shop. So, sure. uh, yeah. So. Okay. And there is no bathroom first floor. It's just a, a, an employee only or a bathroom downstairs. Where would the outdoor seating be located, in front or behind? You know, forget about uh, COVID for a second. We, we, we understand that there's COVID and that, you know, you have other yeah. considerations. But the application says there's going to be these 10 tables. So I, I, I was wondering where the 10 tables would be. Uh, I would probably put at least two tables in front of each bay window. Uh, mm -hmm. to one to the right, uh, two to the right, two to the left. And uh, uh, when March and April comes about, uh, they extended the outdoor programming till September. I will barricade uh, safely uh, with uh, the street and add an another six, seven tables on the street where those two cars are parked right there, the dark and the light uh, cars. Okay, so this is kind of a, like a, a sidewalk cafe in, in, in some respects. Uh, it's it's just a program that the, that the city is offering. As you saw, all the restaurants are building all these tents and uh, barricades to put tables outside because there is no indoor dining. Uh, right. When the right. dining comes in, I probably could squeeze maybe two to three tables inside, if that. Uh, but my mainly my main business will be uh, nine to two o'clock coffee pastries. And then during the afternoon, it will be uh, uh, what do you call hot sandwiches. And I have I will have a retail shop of selling uh, local products made by local people, 
and Italian products uh, imported from Italy. And I uh, would probably be closed by nine o'clock at night. Okay. Yeah, I, I recognize that on the application. And it, yeah. what kind of conversations have you had with local residents? I've been working straight there 60 straight days, and they're happy to have a place that is one open, two serving coffee, three serving mm -hmm. uh, products that uh, local people have made. And uh, also, there's no place in the neighborhood where you could get some fresh bread. Or not, I wouldn't say nowhere, but uh, I'll be selling fresh bread and also I'll have a lot of imported Italian products that you cannot get in that neighborhood. You Most people go to Court Street or Williamsburg or Bensonhurst to get these products, and uh, I, I'll have these products avail available for, uh, for my community. Questions from members of the committee? Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Harrison? Thank you, sir. Um, uh, to our applicant, so so the location is just off the corner of of uh, Decalb and built um, towards the direction of Lafayette. Is that correct, Vito? Correct. Yes. Right. This I think was at one time. I think the place was called Provisions, and it had like French wine and cheese or something at that time. Uh, it, it I'm sorry to cut you off. I apologize. Uh -huh. yeah. It was a sandwich shop about, I think, eight, nine years ago called Baguette About It. And, um, yeah. and yes. then Mason. And then so, Mason um, right. a, uh, so. a coffee shop. And she used that as a uh, meeting place for her uh, wedding parties before right. we right. had a wedding to go to her restaurant on, on Decal Avenue. Right. So um, the, the only question I have, it's... Um, it's uh, it's not so much of a question, Brandon, but it's a statement um, from my observation. And this does not have anything to do with the bit with my um, view of Vito's um, idea or or his application. But there is an existing situation with the um, I guess it's the restaurant, right? It's not a bar that's on the corner that um, it, it's turned over a couple of times. The current owner. Um, whether it's in the current environment that Vito alludes to with the city with during COVID or or even prior to that, with the outdoor seating tending to encroach rather far into the um, the walkway. So I just ask that the applicant consider, however, and in what um, capacity, whether it's under the current program that has to do with COVID, or um, or when we all get uh, better and and we're past that to maintain at least three feet of egress. That's that's my only request. Uh, I think it, sh it should be eight feet of sidewalk space uh, free. I think that's what the city wants. Um, Vito, that would be wonderful. Sorry to talk over you, sir. That would be wonderful if you maintain that. OK, yeah, uh, there will be no issues maintaining that. I currently have, uh, I keep on going back to my other restaurant. I've had that for 17 years. We have done the sidewalk and the street, and we've uh, had more than eight feet, uh, you know, with no issues. So I, I don't think I'm going to come into the community and, you know, after my reputation, come and do anything less than that. So I just, yes, that's good. I, I just don't see how you're going to do 10 tables out there. That, that the application that says includes 10. The street. That includes what? I'm sorry. The street, on the street. Right, 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 right. But I. Uh, Ms. Church, is it your understanding that basically they're entitled to this, the, what they can do on the street as a part of this program, but what if we approve them for this application, at the end of COVID, they can come back and put 10 tables out in front of this location and in, on the street I, there? That's not, I, 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 I can't say anything specifically because I don't know what the city will do, but we don't get to approve what he uses during this period on the street. That is right. I understand that. I understand right. that completely. I'm so, just wondering what we're approving with this application, because the application yeah. says 10 tables on the street. We're, we're just approving at this time. There's no process right now for sidewalk cafe applications. So we're simply approving a legal license. OK. Um, you know, when, when the rules go back, even if they're different, then that we'll deal with that then. But for now, there's not much we can do regarding that. Okay. Any other questions from members of the committee? Varela? Just want to say that Maison May um, operated rather quietly, rather quietly the, um, 
the tables out there. Uh, and I suspect that, you know, there was sort of a, I think it was the nature of, of the menu that it was kind of a quick turnaround. People would come and right. have their coffee and then leave. And I suspect right. it will be similar with this business owner. I mean, it's not like a five course meal, there's sandwiches. So I, I suspect it will be quick turnover. And I don't know Vito personally, but I've been bringing my kids to Graciela's for years and they run a really kind of tight ship there. Um, it's a great spot, very respectful. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for this. I didn't know you had opened that spot already. Um, so eager to, eager to check it out. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elvis. Any other questions from members of the committee? Any questions or comments from members of the public on this application? I have one. This is Nicole again. Oh, Ms. Murray, yes. Go ahead. Um, so I'm looking at on the outside um, portion. Is there is it table service or is it like self serve? Uh, self serve. There will be no waitresses at, at this point in time. Uh, what happens when we go back to normal service? Uh, I I don't know, uh, but we we don't have any room to do table service inside during COVID or during the winter time because it will, I can only fit two tables inside it will be 90 percent takeout and delivery so my, my question though then um, if that's the case is uh, I, I tend to notice that in some of those streets that have the the street sitting which i enjoy um there tends to be a lot of garbage around there from takeout containers so i'm curious what um, your plan is to manage with people having to self um, throw away their own garbage especially with the sanitation budget being cut and those stupid wire litter baskets uh, not getting picked up as much. <laughs> Do you have any have, plans for? Yeah, mm -hmm. I will have my own garbage and my own staff cleaning up. Uh, sanitation is still going around, especially off the corners, checking on uh, restaurants uh, for garbage, but I will have my own waste baskets that I will be checked every morning and every night. Okay, and then last comment. So I just, it's a comment more, but um, it looks like you don't reach the corner. Um, and if you do the outdoor seating, you won't reach the the corner towards decal. But um, I've heard from just friends and stuff that um, sometimes when uh, the the structures are built um, towards corners, it could be hard to see oncoming cars. Um, so there's like a daylighting issue. So I would just ask that um, if you do build something tall with a roof that you consider, um, you know, that you could see through it so that people um, don't uh, have to like peek around to see if there's a car coming. Okay, yes, uh, uh, I keep on mentioning the other restaurant. I do have lattice you around the outdoor seating. Also anything off the corner, you would have to, I think I'm not exactly sure, anything off the crosswalk. After the crosswalk, I think you have to leave eight to 10 feet before you could start any outdoor. And if I would do that, I would go with the 36 inch uh, legal size planters and then the rest going up would be all lattice, uh, whereas it will be see-through. Okay, thank you, Mr. Indeso. The, before we take a vote, I had one more question from Mr. Andrews. If you have a blind customer or someone who's visually impaired and they need assistance, is there going to how will that work if they if they need to use the restroom because they have to go to the place that's 500 feet away if is there going to be someone who will escort them or help them to go to that location or what what would what is your plan for addressing that situation uh we all human beings and we all are going to look out for our customers and non-customers that need to use the bathroom if somebody needs to really use the bathroom and they need to go downstairs i have no problem escorting downstairs uh for her uh, are you going to be on site at this location? And uh, yes, I do my days there and my nights at the other place. So I'll be at both locations. Uh, hit, hit, skip and jump away. Okay, and they'll be able to help them with like food orders and and such. I... There will be how a majority of a, a food, uh, going into this. My my idea. I, I thought I was crazy getting into this now, but I want a majority of this you know, food ordered online and pre-ordered where come, people come pick it up and take it away. I mean, I do have a little retail shop where people could come in and grab and go also. So, but uh, whatever the customer needs, we could uh, service, we could do curbside delivery, we could bring uh, curbside takeout, we could bring the order out to the customer uh, while they're waiting uh, on the sidewalk or on the street side where we have tables and chairs. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions from the committee or the public? Not hearing any, uh, I'll entertain a motion. So moved, Mr. Chan. Mr. Harrison, do I have a second? 
Mr. Marks, any discussion on the motion? Oh. Okay. Uh, Mr. Harrison, how do you vote? In favor. Morella? In favor. In favor. In favor. Mr. Newmark? I, I saw his lips in favor. He's on mute. Ms. Thurston? In favor. Ms. McKnight? Yes. Uh, Ms. Richardson? Oh, thank you. And Mr. Andrews also indicates that he's in favor. I vote in favor as well. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, everybody. Have a great thank night. You. And a Don't go. Don't go. Congratulations. Thank hey, you. Ms. Church, you had a point you wanted to make? Yes. Um, I was just sent a note. Um, and on behalf of Community District 2 and our Brooklyn residents, we'd like to thank Mr. Randazzo for being one of the first restaurants to step up in the neighborhood to donate meals to our frontline workers during the height of the pandemic. My pleasure, my pleasure. That's lovely. And also, I just want to uh, include something. I don't want to toot my own horn, but you brought it up. I will be doing a website through uh, the restaurant called Heroes for Heroes, where people can <laughs> donate any food or sandwiches to any hospital, uh, you know, home, uh, anywhere in, the, in, this, in Brooklyn area. Uh, FDNY, any any place they want to donate, they could go to my website, put an amount, and we'll send the food over to them. Um, so it's going to be called Heroes to Heroes. Uh, we'll be get that up and running as soon as I open up in a few weeks. So, but thank you very much, I appreciate everybody. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great night. You too. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, let's go. I invited everybody up. You're on mute, Brandon. Okay. Thank you to Mr. Randazzo. Renewals are next. Uh, 60 Furman, AKA 90 Furman, one hotel, Brooklyn bridge, 306 gold street, Satsuma. I'm going to do the vote separately for them because honestly, I plan to abstain on, on the one hotel, Brooklyn bridge. Um, and I, I, I just want to ask Ms. Church, any, any concerns or, or, uh, issues with either of these two locations. Ms. Church, you're on mute. You're on, you're on mute, oh, Caroline. Hi, no, there have been no complaints on any of the renewals. Okay, great. Any other, uh, do, I, do I have a motion on uh, 306 Gold Street, Satsuma? Mr. Harrison, second. I'll second. Okay, Ms. McKnight, I'll give Ms. McKnight the second. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Okay. Um, Mr. Andrews votes in favor. I vote in favor. Mr. Harrison, do you vote in favor? Yes, sir. Mr. Newmark? Ms. Varela? Yes, yeah, I. Ms. McKnight? Yes. Uh, Ms. Thurston and Ms. Richardson? Yes, yes. Okay, I assume Ms. Richardson will indicate, but... We 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 vote in favor of the renewal for 306 Gold Street, 60 Furman, aka 90 Furman, one hotel Brooklyn Bridge. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second on that motion? Ms. McKnight seconds. Okay, discussion on the motion. Um, I think it's fair to say there haven't been any complaints recently on this location can tell you when they came to our committee the first time there were concerns about the rooftop pool area i had con I, I i they presented an audio study to us which they said was a comparable property that was from the river cafe and it turned out the river cafe didn't have an outdoor area and um i've i've walked by there late at night and seen that they have allowed an outdoor pool area and that's about as much as i can say about it but we've seen complaints about and they had an incident years ago where some neighbors complained but they resolved it successfully with the neighbors so that's about all i can say about one hotel brooklyn bridge is there any other discussion that folks want to have on on this motion okay um so we'll take a vote um mr harrison really is, vote? Mr. Oh, go ahead Brandon. mr varela it really is a shame that um, 
I wish we had the contact information to the Tenants Association or someone there because it just, you know, we have these opportunities so infrequently to do something mm -hmm. about these licenses. And if these people show up in three months and start complaining about noise, we're going to be like, see you in two years, you know, but, um, right. but we can't, but no one's come and no one's said anything, so we can't really get. They did come previously. They know our address. They know our information. Um, the, the, the board circulates these renewals on the emails, so they're aware of it. But at the same time, we have the ability to vote however we want to on this application. So that, okay. I, I'll, I'll just mention that. Um, any other discussion or can we take a vote? No. All right, I, I think we're in favor of taking a vote. Mr. Harrison, how do you vote? In favor. Okay, Mr. Newmark? In favor. Um, Mr. Varela? In favor. Uh, Ms. McKnight? Yes. Uh, Ms. Richardson? She said yes. Okay, and Mr. Andrew said yes. I abstain. Ms. Thurston? I also abstain. Okay. Uh, motion passes. Thank, thank you all. Um, next, we have approval minutes of December 2nd, 2020. Um, can I get a motion on the minutes? Uh -huh. Mr. Harrison, Mr. Newmark, discussion? I just want to commend uh, Jessica for the fabulous job she does on summarizing some of the blowhards like myself. Uh, in, in the blowhards, and thank you. You're welcome. I, we're we're all agreed on that. I don't I don't know if there's a which we, part. <laughs> <laughs> the blowhard, of course. No, I'm just getting very. Um, okay, so we have to take everybody's vote. Mr. Newmark, how do you vote on the minutes? I approve. Mr. Varela. Uh, Ms. Thurston? Approve. Uh, Mr. Harrison? Approve. Ms. McKnight? Approve. Mr. Andrews also approves. Ms. Richardson, can you so indicate I approve? Mr. <laughs> Richardson does. The minutes are fully approved. Thank you all very much. Um, because of the late hour, I'm going to keep my chairperson's report really short, but I will say, Please, everybody respond on the email I sent about the the about how we can classify what liquor licenses we care more about. We're going to have meetings later this year where we're going to dive into details on presentations like what we had today and um, try to come up with projects and votes that we can take in the future. One thing I wanted to mention from the last meeting was that Ms. Masso had raised a question to the uh, to the doctor who presented uh, from. Uh, NYU Langone about whether he's interested in doing a partnership with uh, these uh, uh, school district 13 and 15. And it's something that I would suggest that we look into with the Youth Education Cultural Affairs Committee. And I, I, I would be, I, I think it's an opportunity for us to connect the dots between concerns about childhood asthma and local schools. We can talk about it at the next meeting because the Youth Education Cultural Affairs Committee, as I understand, their agenda is going to be pretty packed for the next month or two. But um, I wanted to raise it and make sure that we're we're thinking about that issue because it, it sounds like a good project for us to be engaged in. Um, that's about it for my chairperson's report. Uh, other business? Any other business to raise tonight? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, um, Mr. Varell had his hand up first, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go to him. Yes, sir. I would like to just clarify something from the housing conversation that we had. And I, I understand when people say there are units out there, but, but residents can't afford them. And I want to just push back a little bit more, which I put in my comments. I'm, never, I'm not suggesting that the $10,000 unit on Park Avenue be the responsibility of someone who's coming out of a shelter or who's just lost their home. What I'm suggesting is that the, is the city use the available units and subsidize them anyway. Because my argument is that a $9,000 a month unit is still cheaper than erecting buildings, buildings, buildings everywhere all the time. Every new mayor says, we're gonna erect more affordable housing, erect more affordable housing. Or you could just give people an empty unit, subsidize it, and then if it's too much, then it's a year instead of five years or however as you wanna see it. But this is my argument that it is racism and classism. The, the uncomfortable part is that certain people of means don't want people that they perceive as what, whatever homeless is in their minds to live in the unit next door to them. They don't want them on their floor. 
and I, we can have that conversation, but it seems nobody wants to have that conversation. And so that's, mm-hmm. that's why I push back. It's not that I believe that, uh, that if, if you were previously homeless, now you can afford any. No, 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 I wasn't suggesting that. The city, I am aware, subsidizes in part the housing, and they should be up for subsidizing all of the empty units. I could not agree more. Her point. Just now. Let's let's take these th- thoughts into some of our future meetings. We're going to have a future meeting where we don't have a presentation and we spend the time really talking through our thoughts on all this stuff. Just because I know our schedule gets so jam packed, I I I really want to give conversations like that the time and justice that they deserve. Um, but thank you for raising it, Alejandro, and I'll look forward to continuing that discussion. Mr. Harrison, you also had a your hand raised. Yes, I just have a, a quick announcement, which I already know by a comment that I received from Carol Ann that um, there, the, of the smart people on this committee, of which everyone is more than me, um, you are aware. But um, the good news is that both candidates in Georgia who are down have been declared the winners. So happy days are here okay. again. Okay. Well, that's so noted. Um, any, it, uh, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm not going to espouse my, uh, my, my thoughts at this time, but I, you know, definitely hear that. Um, any other business to raise at this, at this, at this point? Um, hearing none community forum members of the community. Do you have any thoughts or expressions? Do we have any members of the community left at this meeting? I'm here. <laughs> oh, Ms. Perlman. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, may I speak? Sure, if you can keep it within two minutes, then it would be great to hear from you. The floor Absolutely. Is yours. I am representing Heights and Hills, which is a social service agency based in Brooklyn, serving older adults since 1971. And I just wanted to spread the word about our services. Um, I'm the director of the caregiver program and um, Nowadays, you know, caregiving is so difficult to begin with. It's stressful, financial burden, physical burden, um, a lot of emotional turmoil. And we have many wonderful free services to offer to family caregivers of older adults. Um, And not just people who are helping care for an older adult, but also older adults who are caring for um, a minor, like a grandchild or a niece or nephew, and as well as older adults who are helping care for an adult with a disability. So three categories of people that we serve and we have um, all types of services, counseling, support groups, um, educational workshops, everything is virtual right now or over the phone. And we also have funding to provide free um, short-term respite home care, as well as supplies like incontinence supplies or things like Insure or or Glucerna. so that's like a very brief overview of our services. And um, I don't think there's much time for questions or anything like that, but you can always um, find our information on the Heights and Hills website, or you can contact me individually. Um, I can put in the information in the chat or whatever works best for all of you. Uh, Ms. Thurston? Yeah, I just, well, it, it's great to hear from you. And I, I'll admit, I don't think much about specifically services for seniors. And I think that would be really interesting to hear more about. I'm just curious when things are not virtual, do you have um, an officer location in this district? Um, yes, curious. thank you. I meant to say that. Um, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. We serve community districts one through nine, as well as mm-hmm. 16 and 17. And our oh, office great. is located in downtown Brooklyn. Oh, great. That's excellent. Thank you very much for that. Who do you get funding from? Um, we are funded by the New York City Department for the Aging. We are under contract with them. Um, about 80% of our funding comes from them and the other 20% we have to fundraise for. Is there anything that we as a community board can do to assist you in, in that or? Oh, um, I'm, I'm not the fundraising uh, person, but I think my my goal here today is just to spread the word about our services. So if you hear of any caregivers that are in need of support, you can send them our way. And thank you for that offer. I I don't know off the top of my head. Great. All right. Um, 
Anyone else here from the, the public who's for the community forum portion? Looking through the roster, I do not see anybody else. At this point, I will ask if there is a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mr. Chair. Mr. Harrison moves. Second. Everyone wants to stay? Oh, Mr. Second. Newmark. Okay, great. Oh. Um, we can take this one. Oh, no, no, no. I, I will. I vote in favor, Mr. Mr. Harrison. In favor. Mr. Newmark. Yes. Mr. Varela. Ms. Thurston. Yes. Ms. McKnight. Uh, Mr. Andrews and Ms. Richardson. Ms. Richardson says yes. Um, I believe Mr. Andrews will want to adjourn. Yes, he does. And that's it. Thank you all for, for the wonderful meeting tonight. Uh, we'll look forward to next month. Happy New Year, everybody, and uh, nice evening. Great job, Brandon. Raquel, Thank nice you. meeting you. Bye. Hey.